check out this great coat we found for Squeaks. It's got a great pattern, it's just the right size, and it even has some Velcro to close it. Squeaks has some trouble doing buttons with his claws, but with the Velcro, he can put his coat on all by himself. Oh, that's a good question, Squeaks. Just where does Velcro come from? You might be surprised to learn that the idea for Velcro actually came from a plant. A long time ago, a man named George de Mestrel was out walking his dog. They passed by some plants along the way, and they both brushed up against the plants as they walked. When George got home, he found small seeds stuck all over his clothes. His dog's fur was covered too. He decided to get a closer look at these sticky seeds. And when he put them under a microscope, he saw that they were covered all over in tiny hooks. Those types of seeds are called burrs, or sometimes cockle burrs, or stickums, which is a pretty fun word to say. Those tiny hooks all over each burr had hooked onto the fabric of George's clothes, and even the tangles in his dog's fur. Then George had an idea. He wanted to make something for people that could stick in the same way. You guessed it! Velcro. Let's take a closer look at what he invented. Ooh, it looks like one side has tiny stiff hooks, just like the burrs did. And the other side has soft, flexible loops of fabric, just like George's clothes or his dog's fur. So Velcro works just like the burrs, with the hook-covered side hooking onto the soft, loopy side. It stays stuck until you pull it apart with enough force to bend the hooks out of the loops. But they don't bend too much, so you can keep sticking and unsticking Velcro over and over. That is a really useful invention, Squeaks. It helps us to stick all sorts of things together, like your coat. When we take ideas from nature and use them to create new things, we call it biomimicry. You might already know that mimic means to copy, and when a word has bio in it, that usually means it has something to do with living things. So when you put those two parts together in the word biomimicry, it means copying living things. In this case, George biomimics the burr's ability to stick to soft things like fabric and fur. And while George used his invention to help people stick things together, the plants used their hook-covered burrs to stick to animals like George's dog. Oh, the plants do that because they have a problem. If a plant drops all of its seeds right next to it, when those seeds try to grow up into big plants, there isn't enough space for them all. The parent plant is already using the water and the soil there, and the seeds can't get enough to survive. So the parent plant needs to get its seeds far away from it, so they can grow up big and strong. But plants can't move around the way animals do. So some plants solve this problem by having seeds that blow away in the wind, like dandelions. Lions. Others surround their seeds with tasty fruit that animals will want to carry away and eat, which means they'll poop out the seeds somewhere else. But some plants use animals in another way. Exactly! They turn their seeds into those sticky burrs. So all they have to do is wait for an animal to get close enough, and their burrs, with all of their seeds inside, will stick to the animal's fur. The animal will hopefully move away from the parent plant before pulling the burrs out of their fur, spreading seeds all over. What an amazing way for plants to survive and spread their seeds, and what a great idea for us to learn from plants. Now let's make sure the Velcro on your coat is nice and snug so we can go outside to play. Have you ever gotten burrs stuck in your clothes? What other amazing plants would you like to learn more about? Have a grown-up help you leave a comment down below or send us an email to kids at scishow.com. We'll see you next time here at the fort.